Viewer discretion is advised. Dr. Miyazawa entered the cell, only to be greeted by the side of her interview subject lying curled on the floor, staring at the ceiling with its remaining eye. You're clearly in a state of acute distress. I've been told you've received morphine this morning. Has it helped? No. Okay, on a scale from 1 to 10, how would you describe your pain? There is no scale that could possibly capture the pain I feel at this moment. A 10 then, she said and noted on her report. You again display unusual calm and clarity, despite your ongoing predicament. There's a separation. I don't know what else to call it. The pain is visceral, nauseating. I'm in unending agony, but it also feels like an out-of-body experience. The subject then started a coughing fit, causing black smoke to emanate from its orifices, both natural ones and ones caused by 7027. Is Khan on duty? Officer Khan? Yes, he is. Why? Can you ask him to put a bullet through my head? Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-7027. SCP-7027, also known as A is for Annihilation, designates an anomalous phenomena primarily harnessed as a process of physical transfiguration and psychological augmentation by members of a monastic order located in the Karakoram Mountain Range. Individuals infected by 7027 are classified as SCP-7027-1. The anomaly initially manifests as a 15 to 25 millimeter diameter black circular dot on the center of an affected individual's forehead. This mark superficially resembles a decorative bindi, but is irremovable unless surgically excised soon after infection. As 7027 progresses, it will consume the face of its host causing the front of the skull to sink and eventually collapse into an interdeterminately deep void before slowly spreading to the rest of the body. Flesh blackened by 7027 does not reflect light and will, over a period of time, develop holes and fissures that further disfigure 7027-1, and like the aperture that consume much of the host's head, displays physically impossible interior dimensions. Objects introduced to these voids are ultimately unrecoverable. 7027 created cavities produce a continuous discharge, the emanation visibly behaving in a manner similar to a hot gas or plasma, but appearing almost completely opaque. All efforts to extract a sample have failed, leaving its chemical composition unknown. The Foundation has yet to uncover the exact source of 7027, but physical symptoms of infection follow only after the monks have confined themselves within the walls of the monastery. These interiors are just large enough to allow for meditation and function as a form of sensory deprivation. The monks believe that, by immersing themselves in darkness, they allow their bodies to become its host. The Foundation became aware of 7027 in 1956, following reports of unusual disfigurements occurring among members of an isolated Buddhist sect in Tibet. The residents of neighboring villages commonly referred to them as the Empty Ones. Foundation classified them as GOI-0184. They practice an extreme form of ascetism and forbids the use of personal names, depictions of the human form, or even the preservation of its own history. It is believed by members of GOI-0184 that enlightenment can only be achieved through drastic humility. To do this, they must be purged of vanity and pride. Through 7027, the monks believe they can permanently escape samsara which is the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Members of GOI-0184 practice ritual self-mortification, believing that pain, humiliation, self-denial, and disfigurement aid in the destruction of ego. Prior to containment, methods of humiliation often involve visiting neighboring villages where the monks would smear themselves in dirt and ash and non-verbally beg or incite the locals into physically assaulting them. Despite frequent injury and infection, this behavior has never been observed to result in fatalities. The monks of GOI-0184 maintain a vow of silence, making it difficult for the Foundation to gather information about the group via interviews. However, on the 9th of December 1997, a security officer entered the Site-95 infirmary to request medication for what he believed at the time to be a sinus headache. Medical personnel immediately noticed a black spot on his forehead. 
after a thorough physical examination, determined that the subject was infected by 7027 and exhibited the first visible symptom of SCP-7027-1 transformation. The security guard was classified as anomalous and received the SCP-7027-1-251 designation. 251 willingly cooperated with its containment and observation, becoming a critical source of information. I know this may be regarded as unprofessional, but I wish to offer my sincerest apology. Had we known infection could occur in such a manner, we would have certainly taken stronger safety precautions. You couldn't have known. Well, still, we will do everything we can to undo your predicament and hopefully prevent this from happening in the future. Okay. With that said, I wish to ask you a few questions about the days leading up to your current condition. Did you by any chance directly interact with any SCP-7027-1? Any physical contact? No. What about the monastery? Did you ever access its inner walls? Just routine patrols. Never lingered long. Well, how do you feel? You seem rather calm, considering your situation. I don't feel anything. I know I should. I should feel scared. But instead, I feel nothing at all. And I should be angry. Angry that I can't feel. Right? I know what my brain wants. It wants to scream. It wants to rage. But instead, nothing. Just emptiness. It's like trying to locate a word in the dictionary, only to find that it's been cut out. Now there's just a hole. By early 1998, 7027 had spread to 251's left eye. It formed a vein that wrapped around the subject's neck and connected to a newly formed black mark located at the cervical region of the spine. 251 will occasionally report headaches before expelling dark smoke and sludge from its mouth. Subjects suffered frequent and violent tremors, causing the body to contort unnaturally and for the subject to walk with a stiff, shambling gait. As 7027-1, belonging to GOI-0184, do not display similar reactions, it is possible that their teachings and practices, particularly meditation, ultimately allows them to better tolerate the effects of 7027 infection. During one of the interviews with the subject as its infection progressed, it asked for a merciful termination by the hands of its former colleague. But due to the research potential presented by 251, the request was denied. 251's transformation displayed significant deviation from other 7027-1 instances, warping the body in conjunction with its increasing number of void pits, each of which steadily grew in circumference at a rate of approximately half an inch per year, and fusing the subject to the containment room floor. By late 2001, 251 lost the ability to see, but retained its mouth and right ear. Hello, it's that time again. How do you feel? Would you kindly describe your recent experiences? The shadows, they won't stop. They reach inside and take, and take, and take. Greedy claws that scrape and tear. I'd bleed for you, but all I have to offer is dust and oil. A part of me is in agony, but that part is falling deeper and deeper. Oh, how afraid he must be. A cool sludge moves beneath my skin. It was always there, as far as I remember. The subject then vomited a black spewage in its hand. Oh no, it came out. How clumsy of me. It then smeared the substance across the floor, where it rapidly evaporated. You mentioned shadows earlier. Do you see something? Because I don't have eyes, you can't just assume that there are skittering shapes in darkness. A hundred bodies, each a hundred legs. Can you smell my fumes? It's incense. It lingers on my tongue and tastes like forgotten dreams. The subject's speech began to trail off, and before long, it lost consciousness. It would not regain consciousness until 14 days after the interview, and was unaware of its last conversation, displaying increased memory loss and confusion. By late 2001, the subject's lower body and left arm coalesced into a shapeless, hardened mound, and its remaining epidermis developed a gray, cracked appearance. Spiraling spiraling round and round. It muttered while expelling black foul-smelling fume from its orifices. Do you remember my voice? Do you know who this is? M mommy It's cold. It's so cold. No, I'm Dr. Miyazawa. Do you remember your name? Tragic, tragic. What miserable ingrates we are. The end comes for us all.
Suddenly, what remained of the subject's skull caved in, followed by the complete collapse of its body. Holy, get me out of here and secure the chamber! 251's collapsed body spread across the containment chamber as its void apertures merged to create a single portal, which was designated SCP-7027-2. Unlike other 7027-1, 251 failed to fully annihilate, with its remaining husk forming a 3.2-meter radius ring around the newly manifested anomaly and rendering 7027-2 permanently fixed for the time being. 7027-2's interior displays properties identical to smaller SCP-7027 created void apertures. Due to 7027-2's size and apparent stability, a probe was sent in. Site-95 did not receive any notable transmissions until 2020. Collected data includes a number of images depicting gold-colored artificial structures which together appeared to form a sprawling metropolis. Further research is pending.